Today, we will be replacing our Converge ONT with an ODI, SFP, Expono, and U-Stick. Disclaimers and precautions. This is for demonstration purposes only. Avoid looking directly into the fiber ends or connectors. Handle fiber carefully. Do not bend the cable. Observe precautions for handling electrostatic sensitive devices such as your SFP module and your media converter. Now, why replace the ISP provided ONT? Well, because we can. And ISPs uses the cheapest possible hardware. So there are also performance issues with it, such as overheating. So having a third party one that is powerful will be recommended. And for security reasons, ISP modems and routers are not updated regularly or not updated at all. So they could have vulnerabilities that are unknown to us. And it is remotely managed by the ISP, so it will act like a backdoor to our internal network. And last but not the least, the space saving. Some ISPs have these huge routers and we will be able to replace it. This will also save us power consumption. Requirements I have used this ODI DFP-34X-2C2 or the UPC connector variant. But you can also buy the ODI DFP-34X-2C3 or the SCAPC variant. As the SCAPC connector is used by Converge and Globe, while the UPC connector is used by PLDT. I also got the SCAPC to SCUPC fiber optic patch cable. You also need the media converter or a switch that has an SFP port. And of course, your Ethernet cable and your PC laptop that has an Ethernet port. Now, getting the details of our Converge Optical Network Terminal, you have to first look at the back of your modem. You will see the device class. In my example, it's a Huawei EG8145B5. The device MAC address, the device serial number, IP address of the device, and the default credentials. We have to log in to the dashboard to get the other details. If you are unable to log in to the dashboard, you may get the super admin credentials from the Backspace Discord. Now, when you log in to the dashboard, you will see the following information. The product class, the vendor ID, the Japan serial number, the device serial number, hardware version, software version. The following information are what we need to clone on our ODI stick. So the system will assume that we are still using the provided router or modem. The configuration of the Xpon stick, you have to set a static IP on your PC or laptop. I set the following as shown on the screen, 192.168.1.5. And after setting this one up, you have to log into the dashboard and you will see the device status that will display the firmware version, the device name, and other information. And browsing below, you will see the pawn status. You will see the pawn status if you have plugged in your fiber cable. But for now, we will configure first the device before plugging in any cable. Up next, you will see the LAN interface settings. And finally, the coupon settings, which we will use to authenticate to our OLT. We also have the VLAN settings and the commit and reboot settings. So for any changes that you make, you have to restart. We have an automatic reboot timer that will automatically restart the SFP stick after a specified uptime. We have backup and restore the settings. So you should use this to back up the current configuration and after you make any changes, you should make backups too. Password configuration, you may change the admin password here. Firmware upgrade if you have a firmware. And finally, the logout button. If you want to learn more about the ODI, you should visit the GitHub page of Anme4000. They also have a Discord page if you want to ask questions. There's also an SSH and Telnet access to the ODI if you want to use the command line interface in setting up ONU.
the default gateway is 192.168.1.1 here are the default values we are going to modify the device on data or the settings for converge based on my research you only need the serial number but i would like to pretend that it is still there when used so again to generate the mac address or to clone the mac address to be like on our original modem we have to use the md5 hash generator just replace this one with your lan mac address and copy the generated hash on the input field and then hit apply changes then you have to restart the sfp after the device have restarted you can check the pawn if it is connected and as you can see here the onu state is 05 which means we have successfully authenticated with the olt and if you remember on how to bridge our converge modem we have utilized vlan 10 so we would just utilize vlan 10 on the vlan settings by setting it to manual and pvid to 10 and then you have to hit apply changes don't forget to reboot the device so after this let's connect your odi to your laptop and plug it in to your third party routers one port just like what we did on how to bridge the converge router now let's log in to OpenSense. we will check the one if we receive an ip address from our sfp and as you can see we have received the ip address So just doing some speed test there should be no significant changes in speed we are still on our original plan now what's left to configure is how to access the odi interface while we are bridge Fortunately, I found some tutorial on how to do it on OpenSense. Here is the tutorial on how to access the interfaces or web dashboards of bridged modems. So we can use this to access the interface of Converge Globe or PLDT modems, provided that you have configured it properly. So I'm going to my OpenSense dashboard under interfaces. Let's go to virtual IPs, settings, and as you can see here, I have added the IP alias for the one interface on our network address. It is 192.168.1.5/24. And if you will notice, this is the same IP address that we did earlier when we configured our ODI stick. So simply create this virtual IP, click save. Now before I forget, make sure that your ODI IP address is the default one, which is 192.168.1.1. The net mask is 255.255.255.0 or that would be 24 because if you change that then this will not work for you you have to change this according to the ip address that you set on your odi now let's go to firewall under NAT, click outbound now we have to create a new manual rule but for me i have created it already so i'm just going back to what i did under interface select one tcp ipv4 Source address, LAN net. Destination address, this will be the SFP IP address. So it would be single host or network, 192.168.1.0. Net mask is 24. Translation target, you have to select the one that we created earlier on the virtual IPs, which is 192.168.1.5. Now select static port and then hit save. Also don't forget to add the description so you wouldn't be confused on what is this rule for. After this go to rules, floating and let's add another rule. So action is pass, interface LAN, direction any, source LAN net, destination Select single host or network and input again the IP address of our ODI 192.168.1.0 and 24 and add a description 
that you will be accessing SFP web interface. Now click save. And if you are successful, you can now log in to the 192.168.1.1 as you can see here. So this concludes our mini guide for today. I hope that this is useful for everyone who wants to replace their ISP provided modem. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment if you have a question. And that would be all for today. Thank you.